a sebaceous cyst slash sabiflorin unregistered trademark SAST slash is a general term that is used to refer to either epidermoid cysts or pillar cysts. However, the above types of cyst contain keratin, not sebum, and neither originates from sebaceous glands. Therefore strictly speaking they are not sebaceous cysts. True sebaceous cysts are relatively rare and are known as steatocystomas or, if multiple, as steatocystoma multiplex. It has therefore been suggested that the term sebaceous cyst, when used to refer to epidermoid cysts and pillar cysts, should be avoided since this is misleading. In practice, however, the terms are still often used interchangeably. Epidermoid cyst Pillar cyst About 90% of pillar cysts occur on the scalp, with the remaining sometimes occurring on the face, trunk and extremities. Pillar cysts are significantly more common in females, and a tendency to develop these cysts is often inherited in an autosomal dominant pattern. In most cases, multiple pillar cysts appear at once. Presentation The scalp, ears, back, face, and upper arm, are common sites for sebaceous cysts, though they may occur anywhere on the body except the palms of the hands and soles of the feet. In males a common place for them to develop is the scrotum and chest. They are more common in hairier areas, where in cases of long duration they could result in hair loss on the skin surface immediately above the cyst. They are smooth at the touch, vary in size, and are generally round in shape. They are generally mobile masses that can consist of fibrous tissues and fluids, a fatty substance that resembles cottage cheese, in which case the cyst may be called keratin cyst. This material has a characteristic cheesy, or foot odor smell, a somewhat viscous, sphrosanguineous fluid. The nature of the contents of a sebaceous cyst, and of his surrounding capsule, will be determined by whether the cyst has ever been infected. With surgery, a cyst can usually be excised in its entirety. Poor surgical technique or previous infection leading to scarring and tethering of the cyst to the surrounding tissue may lead to rupture during excision and removal. A completely removed cyst will not recur, though if the patient has a predisposition to cyst formation, further cysts may develop in the same general area. Causes, blocked sebaceous glands, swollen hair follicles, and excessive testosterone production will cause such cysts. A case has been reported of a sebaceous cyst being caused by the human botfly. Hereditary causes of sebaceous cysts include Gardner's syndrome and basal cell nevus syndrome. Treatment Sebaceous cysts generally do not require medical treatment. However, if they continue to grow, they may become unsightly, painful, infected, or all of the above. Surgical Surgical excision of a sebaceous cyst is a simple procedure to completely remove the sac and its contents. There are three general approaches used, traditional wide excision, minimal excision, and punch biopsy excision. The typical outpatient surgical procedure for cyst removal is to numb the area around the cyst with a local anesthetic, then to use a scalpel to open the lesion with either a single cut down the center of the swelling, or an oval cut on both sides of the center point. If the cyst is small, it may be lanced instead. The person performing the surgery will squeeze out the keratin surrounding the cyst, then use blunt-headed scissors or another instrument to hold the incision wide open while using fingers or forceps to try to remove the cyst intact. If the cyst can be removed in one piece, the cure rate is 100%. If, however, it is fragmented and cannot be entirely recovered, the operator may use curettage to remove the remaining exposed fragments, then burn them with an electrocauterization tool, in an effort to destroy them in place. In such cases the cyst may recur. In either case, the incision is then disinfected and, if necessary, the skin is stitched back together over it. A scar will most likely result. In some cases where cure rate is not 100% the resulting hole is filled with an antiseptic ribbon after washing it with an iodine-based solution. This is then covered with a field dressing. The ribbon and the dressing are to be changed once or twice daily for 7 a euro 10 days after which the incision is sewn up or allowed to close by secondary intention, that is by forming granulation tissue and healing from the bottom up. An infected cyst may require oral antibiotics or other treatment before or after excision. An approach involving incision, 
rather than excision, has also been proposed. References External links Overview at University of Maryland Medical Center, Epidermal Inclusion Cyst at E-Medicine, Sebaceous Cyst, Pictures, Causes, Treatment and Removal, PrimeHealthChannel.com